Hi, I'm Old Sneelock. Welcome to another episode of Old Sneelock's Workshop. I don't know who made this. It's a more inexpensive drill than what I've gotten before. This one was only $7.50. So it's comparative to the $5 drill, but it's in a little better shape. It has a handle, it's got this handle. The chuck's in a little better condition, but it's pretty rusty. So I think I'm going to have to disassemble it and clean it before I do anything. means taking this gear off of this and it might not come because it's a little different design. It appears to have a ball bearing thrust bearing right there but I don't know how this is put together. Never seen one with two gears on it. That'll be kind of interesting. It'll take a bit of doing. Okay, everything oiled up, now we leave it sit till morning. I'm not going to strip this one down as far as I did the $5 breast drill, because this one's in better shape. It's, it's rustier, and quite a bit dirtier, but the frame is straight and it doesn't have any major missing pieces. If you remember the plate on the other one was snapped off and it didn't have this handle. I'm hoping to be able to scrape down and find a name stamped into the handle. Not that it matters a whole lot, it's just nice to know who made the tool that you're working on. Now 
Now you can see why I didn't want to do this on my nice wooden bench top. It's kind of dirty. And I'm not going to be able to pull the handle off of this one as easily. The other one was held on with a nut. This one is riveted. Now I can take the rivet out and I probably can make a new rivet. Let's not make more work out of this than I need to. Get you up a little closer so you can see better what I'm doing. Now Miller's Falls like to stamp the name on the handle. And I'm hoping this company did too. Well, if it's on there, it's pretty well hidden. Nothing wrong with the proper use of force. I got a good percentage of it cleaned off, but I couldn't get to the spot that I figured the stampings were, of course. That was the one spot I couldn't reach. There's a name stamped in it. I think I need a sanding box. Miller's Falls. Really hard to see because it's very badly corroded. All I can do is, is shine the high spots and hope the dark spots show up. Number 120B. Well, that's good. It's no longer a nameless piece of equipment. It's now a Miller's Falls 120B. This main wheel uh, still has a little bit of the orange paint left on it, but I think this is one that's going to go into the vinegar. Getting cold enough out at night that I don't want to have things in the. Uh, it's getting cold enough out that I don't want to have things in the electrolysis tank. If it freezes overnight, then you have to spend a lot of time getting them out. See that that handle pretty well pitted. Well, that's two items that are clean.
This one and this one, they're going to go into the vinegar. Vinegar has one distinct advantage over electrolysis. It is a cleaning agent. Back when I was a young lad, I worked for a woman named Mrs. Golkert, and she had me washing her windows. Well, what she had me use was vinegar. Vinegar and water mixed together. And newspapers. Of course, finding a newspaper now is kind of an unusual thing anymore. Uh, everybody's going on the internet and getting their news, so newspapers aren't as common. But back then, everybody got a newspaper every day. And newsprint was a good substitute for what we now use paper towels for. Clean this up and get it ready for some finish on there. Kind of that rivet a little bit, get some of the rust crap off of it. Yeah, that's pretty good. take some of the burrs and splinters off of it from where it's been sitting in the damp for a good number of years I think especially going by the way that that rod is pitted it's been sitting in the damp quite a bit there's those two clean and ready now this one's going to take a little more doing might have to soak a while But they do keep the dirt off your fingers. And this greasy dirt gets right into my fingers and I have to scrub like the dickens to get it out. I can see that this stuff is actually starting to break it down. Now, I'm not going to drive the gear off, like I said. I'm not going to take this one down as far as I did the other one. The gear on the other one was a good thing to take apart because it had two broken bearings in it. But this one, the only bearings in it that I have are right here inside this race. Right there. And I can actually open that up and see all the bearings. And all the bearings are rolling. And they're working just fine. So I'm thinking, somebody oiled this, and they may have oiled it only occasionally, but before it got set for all the decades to sit in the dark, somebody oiled it. And that oil kept all these things from rusting up. They're not rusty, they're grimy, they got crap all over them.
And if I don't dip this in the vinegar, I won't get vinegar down into the bearings. And vinegar's fine. You can use vinegar, and I, I actually like using vinegar. It does a good job of removing rust. And it cleans and does a good job of doing that. Mineral spirits, this stuff does nothing for rust. Will not touch it. But that's not the purpose of it. It's not designed to take off oxidation. It's only designed to thin paint and clean brushes that have paint in them. But it is a thinner and it's also a, a let's see, what, what am I trying to think of? What is the word? It's a solvent. That's the word. Paint thinner is a solvent and it dissolves oils. Part of why I don't want to have it on my hands is because it dissolves the oil in my skin and causes my skin to dry out and crack. But in the case of this, it won't cause the steel to dry out and crack. All it's going to do is take that age-old oil that's kept these parts from rusting and break it down so that it washes away. And when the oil washes away, the grit and crack will wash away also. And I'm not going at this hammer and tongs because I don't want to have this stuff spread all over the basement. If I was wearing my old clothes and working out in the garage or outside somewhere, I'd probably be flailing at this thing. Because going quickly is always good. And I'm not going to hurt anything by taking this soft bristle brush and scrubbing the crap out of those gears. Because it definitely is cleaning them. You can see the junk sitting on top of the water, or on top of the solvent in the little pan here. I don't know if I've mentioned it before, but there's a, a local grocery store that we buy a lot of meat at. And that store uses these little plastic trays to put the meat in. And they are solvent proof. I don't know what they're made out of. But they work excellently for cleaning parts. I'm not even going to paint this. This has got a pretty good amount of the old original Japaning on it. I don't know how it got the name Japaning. Maybe some of you guys can enlighten me on how that works. Uh, I know that a lot of the old equi equipment had a really heavy coat of paint on it. And the paint, I'm told, contains tar as part of the paint. And that's the reason that this stuff is so thick. Hmm. 
fought through it a little bit better. I don't know if you can see them, but I can see those ball bearings in there. And they all appear to be rolling along just like they're supposed to. There's no clatter or noise inside that bearing housing. So I'm not going to take this thing apart. If I wanted to, I'd have to drive that pin out from this side. And that pin is driven through the joint between the two gears and they evidently get this one slipped on inside because that has a pocket that slips over the shaft up here then this one goes down in behind it because this one is flat across the bottom so I would have to disassemble that pin by driving it out pull the shaft out slip this gear out pull this gear back to remove it then to reverse the ascent for the assembly process I would put the gear in first this gear in first then slip this one in and then slip the shaft in and line those holes up uh, after the trouble I had with the last one and knowing that these are considered to be a one-off deal you're not supposed to ever take that gear that uh, pin out I'm not gonna mess with it it's gonna last a long long time doing just what it's been doing I think it'll be more than happy to remain that way. Now we're down to the chuck. And the chucks are usually a pain in the butt to take apart. They're not designed to be disassembled. You can do it. The little springs in here tend to get screwed up and occasionally you have to disassemble those springs and take them out to get this thing to work. But I think this one, the only problem with it, it has been left set and it has corroded up. And that little plunger down in there got sticky. The way this works, this screw goes in and pushes on a pressure plate. It's a pressure plate down inside that hole. Inside the chuck there's a cup shaped pressure plate that sits down over the end of this threaded rod. And once it gets down there and engages the threaded rod, as the chuck is turned onto the shaft, that pressure plate it is forced up through the chuck and it engages the chuck jaws and causes the chuck jaws to advance to the end of the chuck. Now, there's still a bunch of crap in there and I'm going to try and wash that out. But I don't want to disassemble this. It's a threaded barrel and it's really tough to get off. Very good likelihood that I would damage the chuck if I attempted it.
Hmm. I might have to. That is a lot of junk in there. Well, I'm going to put this into the solvent bath to soak paint thinner. Let's see if I can't get that to clean up. But before I do that, I'm going to wire brush the outside of it. Where to sit and soak. If you have any suggestions for a new video, questions about today's video, or any of the other videos on the channel, just drop a note in the comments. You know I read them all. Thanks for watching. This video is not to be viewed by anyone under the age of 13 in the U.S. or 16 in the European Union without the express written permission of the parents or legal guardians of the underage person. Such written permission must be on file at the local government entity in charge of enforcing the rules and regulations established by the FTC. Anyone violating these terms is admitting by default that they hold harmless the owners and operators of this channel. Any and all questions should be addressed to your local branch of the FTC.